right, so here's the Russian bomber and recent interim UFC heavyweight title challenger, Sergei Pavlovich. This man walks into a fighter meeting and is as about intimidating as any athlete that we sit down with. Tremendous power in the hands. Tremendous speed with those hands as well. He works off an incredible jab, moves exceedingly well for a man his size. A lot of people, though, are going to try to challenge his ground game. Trained at AKA back in the day, of course, with UDC. Many people believe, though, when you're fighting Pavlovich, the path of least resistance is to get this absolute giant to the ground. So here he is, the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion, Tom Aspinall. He has put UK on the map. And certainly Michael Bisping and Leon Edwards deserve a lot of credit. But now the UK has a heavyweight champion. And he hasn't even arrived at his fighting prime. We heard a lot about the grappling of Tom Aspinall and just how good he was in that realm. But his striking is outstanding. He's got the power to go with the speed. He moves as well with the footwork as any heavyweight on the roster. And that's really the big challenge for the opposition here tonight. Power to be sure on the other side, but how are they going to keep up with Tom Aspinall with the lateral movement, the jab, and everything else that he presents and poses on the feet? Man, what a crazy atmosphere inside GMS Arena here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil tonight. The athletes are ready to go. Let us now see who will have the upper hand. Our tail of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. And now for the official introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Sergey Pavlovich. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world. Tom Aspinall! Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Dateline, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This place is total chaos when it comes to mixed martial arts, and we expect a lot of volume in this arena time. It's crazy to take in this environment. The crowd is going crazy. The fighters are drawing inspiration from him. It's a big moment for every Brazilian fighter that hits the curtain. They are propelled by these fans. Pavlovich gets the early takedown. Nice start to the round for him. Let's see what he can do with it. Nice pass. Inside the closed guard now. I mean, he went right into his full guard. What does he do to try to advance himself to give him more of an advantage on the mat? Aspinall getting work from the top here. He's got to do a better job to cover up. Pretty productive with the strikes here off his back. Well, he's worked very hard on this part of his game, and these ground strikes are really starting to take their toll. Stop. All right, the referee not seeing enough action there. We go back to the center of the octagon now. Right. Big power shot there. Oh, he gets caught again there by another hook. He's connected on a few so far here in this round. Right back to it there. Oh, nice takedown. Look at that. Recognize him about to lose position. 
wide north-south position now. We'll see how he chooses to proceed. Aspinall is able to make a nice transition there back into side control. He's trying to get to a half guard at least. At minimum, trying to go to half guard. Takes his back now. 90 seconds now to go in the round. We need to work on this position. Under a minute now to go round one. Bottom fighter move. better move. Yeah, he's got to move, John. He's got to shrimp and try to either get up or pull his opponent back into him so he doesn't have the posture to land that big damage. Aspinall's back in full now. Oh, he got to his spot. Mm, that was nice. Final seconds here in round one. Five minutes in the books. All right, sit down, buddy. Take a deep breath. All right, get him some water. Get a drink. Right, slow that heart rate down. All right, here we go. All right, so there's the horn. That means it's the end of the round. And get that man a singlet, man, right? Offensive wrestling on point tonight. That was a tutorial. That was every single takedown you could secure right, right. in a fight. He did right. it all the right way. He's beating his opponent to the finish before he can try to sprawl and respond. He's a step behind. I'm not sure his opponent knows where he is. No, he doesn't know where he is. He's hurt real bad. That punch landed in the perfect spot. So pretty good recovery by the opponent after getting stunned pretty good. Trying to capitalize on those opportunities. I mean, you can't waste these opportunities. You don't get them as often as you like. So you get a guy hurt, you got to find a way to finish the fight. Oh, guillotine, guillotine here. That guillotine is tight. This guy is so aware, he never leaves anything long to allow for himself to get subbed. Drops down inside the now closed guard of his opponent. Let's see how patient he is as he attacks a submission or big round and pound. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style Whoa. gets it denied. Blocked! Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. Under three minutes now to go in the round. Now he's going full mount. Yep, got to be very careful there. And now he's got the back. All right, so new round, same narrative as he continues to land that hook, and I'm just not sure how many more. On his back now, he's going for the rear naked choke. We may get a finish here. Rear naked choke, locked in. All he's got to do now is try forward pressure to make his opponent tap. Oh, he got out. He took two hands to the elbow and shoved it over the top of his head to free himself from that rear naked choke. Oh, excellent pressure here from top position by Aspinall. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. Under a minute now to go in the round. Champ, yeah. 
Gotta be careful here. If you're the bottom fighter, DC, what do you do? You got to move, you gotta shrimp, you gotta get off of the hip to try to move your opponent off of you or pull him down to close the space. All right, round three coming up next. All right, there's the horn. What a round it was. He hurt him pretty badly there in the middle of the round. Got to think he's going to be looking for more of the same here when they get up off the stools. I don't know who it is. I don't know who we're watching fight. But I tell you, as he walks back, he looks like Bambi. When Bambi was born and her legs were shaking, that's exactly how this man looked when he took that right hand. He was hurt bad, John. And the ability to get through that, the ability to still be in this fight shows to his toughness. But if he doesn't change it, he won't get he will not get another chance. Bambi. Bambi. You ready to fight? Ready. Go All right, here we go with this third round of this championship fight. Pretty strong jab there by Pavlovich. Oh, big right hand, yes. Stand. Oh, shot to the body connects there. He hasn't really thrown too many body strikes in this fight, but now, as this fight goes on, he is not discriminating, working the body, and those shots are gonna count. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Fighters separate from the clinch now. Go to the next position, start shoving that knee through, trying to get the half guard, which in turn will lead to more opportunities for advancement. But if you're on the bottom. All right, so he's setting up for submission here. Ooh, looks like it might be locked in. What's the kitchen? You gotta be kidding me. How did he get out? He just stayed calm. He's able to withstand the fire. And now he finds himself out and safe. Champ, these submission setups aren't that bad, but he keeps getting denied. Yeah, because he's not panicking. He's taking his time. He knows what to do whenever something is coming in his direction. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch a guy comfortable even when he's under attack. Aspinall's right back to the full mount here. Beautiful transition. Oh, you gotta be careful there, yep. All right, half guard position here, DC. You have an extra pop in your step when you talk about fighters working out of this half guard. Oh, man. I like half guard as a top fighter. I understand half guard as a bottom fighter. Don't want to be there. Right. Very dangerous. He's having his way with him here. The ground strikes continue to pile up. Espinel's really pressing now. He's got his opponent's belly flat on the mat. Big ground and pound. It's okay. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. All right, working inside his opponent's guard here. You cannot sit in these jujitsu guys' guard. And you can't have one arm in, one arm out. Guys will start throwing up legs, chasing triangles. Pretty athletic off his back to avoid that strike from the top. All right, that's three rounds in the books. We are headed to the championship rounds. All right, let's get you some pictures from that previous round, DC. A lot of good work with the ground and pound strike. Yeah, he was able to control posture, get himself postured up, land big ground and pound as he ended the round. What a great finish to a fantastic round. You ready to fight? Ready. Go. Fourth round, fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. All right, here we go. The tension is palpable. Fourth round is underway. You've got a thing or two to say about these championship rounds. The fourth round is easily the hardest round in fighting. You're so used to fighting up to three. You've got to get back off of that stool. And this is a real test of your will and desire to 
and win a fight. Oh, punches and bunches all to the head. Beautiful combination. Oh, nice double there, yes. He passes the half. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defensive. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips, making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard. Oh, now looking to posture up, and he lands a big head strike. Nicely done there by Aspinall. Now he's with an arm triangle on the opposite side. When he goes to finish, look, he's got it locked. When he goes to finish, he has to pass his body all the way to the opposite side. Oh, somehow, some way he got out. Work. These guys are back and forth in submission defense wins this transition. Nice transition. Good work from the top here by Pavlovich. All right, half guard position here. We'll see what he can do with it. A lot of weapons at his disposal from this dominant position. Oh, man. I feel for a wrestler, this is the most dominant position in all of fighting because wrestlers love control. Right. And to have your upper body free and your leg able to hold your opponent in position, it is like striking gold. Build your posture, throw your punches, big damage, but then always control the far side underhook. This is a great position for a top fighter. All right, half guard position here, DC. You have an extra pop in your step when you talk about fighters working out of this half guard. Oh, man. I like half guard as a top fighter. I understand. Ooh, going for a leg lock. Heel hook looks tight. it done by submission tonight champ he was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it eventually his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission he did that and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon all right bruce buffer is in there with the official decision Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Deans called a stop to this contest at 3 minutes, 56 seconds of round number 4. Declaring the winner by tap out due to a heel hook. And still!